Hi, and welcome to the Global Antitrust Institute's online lecture series. I am Bruce Kobayashi, and today's topic is successive monopoly. Topics covered, we'll first look at uh, the optimal pricing of a vertically integrated upstream downstream firm, and compare that to independent pricing by two uh, separate upstream and downstream firms. Uh, we will see that both of these independent firms will charge a margin called double marginalization, and we will see the negative effect of double marginalization on output prices and welfare. We'll then go into potential solutions. One, of course, is vertical integration. Uh, we would get the internalization of the pricing externality and downward pricing pressure from the fact that uh, the vertically integrated firm takes into account the effect of the two margins on uh, output profits. And uh, then we'll look at some contractual solutions, uh, including uh, the use of ad valorem prices in the absence of marginal costs. Uh, certainly a um, relevant uh, issue in the recent Apple v. Pepper, uh, Illinois brick case that's at the Supreme Court. And then we'll look at maximum RPM and optimal two-part tariffs. Uh, the Supreme Court uh, last looked at this issue in state oil be con. All right, uh, let's go to equilibrium pricing in a vertically integrated firm. Uh, here we have a uh, vertically integrated app developer distributor. And during this lecture, I will focus on the special case of zero marginal cost uh, for almost all of the results here. Uh, this assumption is not, um, not going to affect anything. The one uh, caveat is the use of ad valorem pricing, and I'll discuss that uh, when we get to it. Uh, but here you have a, a uh, linear demand curve, DA, for the app, uh, and uh, downward sloping and linear. And uh, as we all know, um, the app developer will seek to maximize uh, his profits uh, when marginal revenue equals to marginal cost. Uh, in the case where marginal costs equal zero, the, the app developer will attempt to maximize total revenue or uh, set marginal revenue equal to zero. Uh, um, and uh, that will result in a uh, output of 60 units per period and a optimal price of $6. Uh, his profits, uh, total revenue um, will be 360. So this is the standard uh, maximization of profit, uh, out, um, price and output in the case where marginal cost is zero. Um, now let's consider what happens when the uh, app developer has to uh, distribute his product through a, um, a distributor. Um, and uh, we'll assume that uh, distribution has zero marginal cost. Um, as well as production of the app has zero marginal cost. There could be, of course, development costs, but, but we're assuming zero marginal cost for both uh, development uh, and, um, the, and dis the distributor. Um, here we have uh, the um, price um, that was set by the vertically integrated app developer, um, six, so what happens if the uh, app developer sets a price of six uh, and uh, sends that to the uh, distributor to sell to consumers? Well, uh, the uh, $6 that the uh, app developer charges the distributor for a copy of, of his app will uh, then be viewed as a marginal cost by the distributor. And the distributor will then try and sell into the demand curve for the app. Uh, and he will set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost, which will be six. And at that point, the uh, distributor will decide to uh, um, set a price of $9 to consumers for the app. And he'll have a margin of three, right? Uh, instead of 60 units that were sold by the vertically integrated um, app developer distributor facing the same demand curve, uh, the uh, successive monopolies 
where both the app developer and the app distributor take a margin uh, results in uh, output being halved to the 30. What happens if uh, the uh, app developer lowers its price, let's say to four? Uh, well, um, the uh, app distributor will then see four as its marginal cost. And with that marginal cost, we'll choose to uh, take a margin of four and charge $8 for the app. Uh, you will not get uh, uh, um, anywhere near the 60 that the vertically integrated app developer distributor uh, sold. Uh, you will get 40. Uh, the uh, app developer gets a, a lower margin and uh, um, the uh, lower margin for the app developer is uh, met with a higher margin uh, for the app distributor. And as you could see, the app developer's residual demand, what is left over after he anticipates what the distributor will do after he takes this margin, will be the marginal revenue curve um, for the original app demand curve. Right? Uh, whatever uh, happens, whatever price uh, the app uh, developer charges, the app distributor basically just tax on the difference between the marginal revenue and demand curve. Um, and so the app developer's residual demand curve uh, will be the original marginal revenue curve, MRA. Uh, what happens? Well, it turns out that um, if you think about uh, the app uh, developer and his optimal price, he's going to say, well, my demand curve is uh, the residual demand curve equal to the marginal revenue curve to the original demand curve. So uh, uh, DR is the demand curve I'm facing, anticipating the uh, distributors taking a margin. And so I will set um, the uh, marginal revenue curve to the residual demand curve, which is the inwardmost dashed line uh, equal to marginal cost. So again, we've assumed that to be zero. And so I will set a price of six and uh, I will um, expect to sell 30 units. We'll tack on the, um, the app uh, distributor's margin on that. The gross price is nine. And, and uh, it turns out that uh, in equilibrium with double margins, the distributor's profits is 90. That's the uh, solid uh, gray shaded area. And the app developer's profits is 180. Um, that's the hatched uh, area. Right, they only sell 30 units and total profits are 270, uh, whereas the vertically integrated um, um, app developer distributor made a lot more, 360. So one solution to this, of course, would be to vertically integrate, right? Uh, vertical integration allows the uh, app developer to internalize the um, uh, e effect of the second margin uh, and uh, basically set the uh, marginal cost of distribution to zero uh, as an internal price, uh, internalizing the, um, the effect of the second margin. He can raise his output from 30 to 60. You see on the, on the horizontal axis, the uh, big blue arrow showing the increase in price. And he can then raise the price to, uh, I'm sorry, lower the price to consumers from nine to six. And that's the downward pricing pressure you see from the elimination of double marginalization. If you think about uh, the uh, um, a vertical merger, uh, this is always one of the effects uh, to the extent that uh, you have two independent uh, margins being charged by, by the firms and the vertical merger will then cause this downward pricing pressure uh, as one of the effects in, in any vertical merger um, where there is a, a, a double marginalization, okay? All right, so vertical integration being uh, one solution. You could also uh, keep the uh, two separate firms uh, and uh, solve double mar marginalization through uh, um, nonlinear pricing. Um, so uh, one uh, aspect of nonlinear pricing would be ad valorem pricing. Uh, 
here we could uh, now instead of the generic uh, distributor, we could say the Apple is, is the distributor. It's the App Store. And Apple, let's say, takes um, um, a third of uh, the retail price of the apps. Okay, what happens there is uh, the uh, ad valorem rate of a third in the zero marginal cost case rotates the demand curve uh, down from the uh, point where the demand curve hits the horizontal axis. So it, it rotates it uh, from that point down inward. Um, and so uh, that uh, demand curve labeled DR is uh, what the uh, app developer gets after Apple takes its 30% cut or 33% cut. Um, and that's a residual demand curve. You notice that uh, um, with a linear demand curve, um, the uh, marginal revenue curve will hit the horizontal axis at exactly the same output, 60. And so um, the app developer uh, facing a, uh, um, a contract with Apple where uh, they end up with uh, two thirds of the revenue uh, from, the, from the sales on the app store will choose the exact same output and a uh, net price, which results in, in a, a gross price, uh, which uh, will uh, mimic exactly the uh, result of a vertically integrated firm. And so you get uh, total profits uh, being um, uh, 360, just like the vertically integrated firm, you get the increase in sur consumer surplus that we saw with vertical integration, uh, and you get the elimination of the effects of double marginalization. If the marginal cost uh, of, of distribution or, or selling an additional uh, or producing an additional app is positive, uh, then uh, you don't get complete elimination of double marginalization, uh, although you do sort of, all things equal, get less um, of the distortion of double marginalization when a uh, ad valorem uh, rate is used than when a unit rate is used. Uh, finally, uh, the um, uh, another contractual solution would be to uh, um, impose maximum RPM on on the uh, on the distributor. That uh, you said um, um, the distributor may not sell uh, the um, the apps in the app store for any price above marginal cost. Here it's assumed to be zero, uh, the marginal cost of distribution. So uh, they have to sell it at six uh, or less. And um, uh, how does the distributor get paid? Well, it, it could be uh, the, uh, the maximum RPM of, of zero uh, could be part of an optimal two-part tariff where the, the marginal price is uh, equal to marginal cost or zero in this case and uh, the uh, app developer then pays the uh, app distributor a lump sum fee per period. Um, and this also would, uh, uh, through contract, mimic the effect of, of vertical integration. You would get uh, an output of 60, uh, you get a, a, a gross price of six to the consumer, and uh, you get uh, the app developer's total revenue being 360 minus whatever uh, payment uh, the lump sum payment he would have to pay to the developer. All right, um, well, it's a very important concept. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Thank you very much.